In reviewing for the first exam, here are two multiple choice questions. Question two has to do with recording revenue on the income statement when an order is received, but before production has begun, violates which of the following? And it violates A, the criteria that must be met prior to revenue recognition. Quickly, to review those four criteria, one, you have to have completed a significant portion of the production and sales effort. And if you're recording the revenue on the income statement when the order is received, but before you've started production, you have not completed the significant portion of production and sales effort. So that's what it's in violation of. The other three criteria that also must be met is the amount of the sale must be objectively measured. In other words, you've agreed upon a, a negotiated sales price. The third one is that you've incurred the majority of costs and that the remaining costs can be reasonably estimated. In other words, you the end is in sight as to how much this cost or this project is going to be. And finally, that cash collection is reasonably assured, meaning that the customer not only has the means to pay, but it is also has the intent to pay. So two, the answer is A. Three, omitting a journal entry to recognize accrued salaries expense during the adjusting process would. Now that entry would be this one, where we're expensing the salaries now, but we'll pay for the salaries in a subsequent period. If we omit making this entry, then expenses are too small, which means that our net income will be too large, and our retained earnings would be overstated. And if we fail to credit salaries payable, our current liabilities would be too small, which means that my current ratio would be um, impacted as well. So let's look at our choices here and see which one works. Now understating retained earnings means that my net income is too small. Well that can't be because if my expenses are too small it would have been an overstatement of retained earnings. Let's jump to C. Uh, working capital, you'll recall, is current assets minus current liabilities. So if I fail to record a current liability, my working capital, again, would be overstated because um, my current liabilities would be too small. Uh, it's not D either because it wouldn't understate net income because if I forgot to record an expense, then my net income would have been overstated as well. So the answer is B, and the answer is B because current assets over current liabilities is the current ratio. And if current liabilities are too small, then yes, the current ratio would be overstated because the denominator would be too small. So hopefully these two multiple choice questions on chapters three and four will uh, make sense for the first exam.